Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. The way the game is going to be played is that you're going to play a number of rounds so everybody gets to be the conductor once. If somebody chooses your track to kill, you'll get one of these. They do have three points on the other side. Whoever has the least amount of these at the end of the game is the winner. What's going to happen is you're going to break into two teams. If, say, you're the conductor, then the thing will come towards you. So I'm just going to move this off to the side because it doesn't really matter. What's going to happen is, is somebody on your team is going to get three of these cards. Then what you're going to do is you're going to get three of these cards right here. And then if there is another player, let's say you're playing with enough people, you will get three of the little evil cards, if you will, you'll have. So once these are given out, you try to equalize them as much as possible on your team. Your team will have these cards to choose from for the round. Then what's going to happen, you're going to put a random card down for each person just off the top of the deck. This one says a scientist who will one day discover the secret to interstellar space travel. A balloon containing a highly contagious airborne strain of Ebola. That just kind of gets the board seated. Like I said, everybody gets a random card. Then each team will choose one there. So your choice will be your best friend, significant other, a switch with a 10% chance to donate a nuclear bomb, or an orphan with a heart of gold. So let's say we put an orphan down on our side and we'll discard the other cards that we use. And they happen to use a fragile but functional teleportation machine. So that's pretty nice. Then what's going to happen is your team's going to play one of these negative cards. Giant lizard on its way to attack a major city. A horde of zombies running towards you. Or a grumpy old dragon sitting on a horde of treasures. So let's say it's a giant lizard. And you're going to place this on the opposite team. Because you want to make that team look as bad as possible. And then on your side, he happened to play your evil twin. Then you're going to look through your modifiers. It says one, I got one that says it's pretty hot. One to become a powerful politician and start the purge. And if killed, return more powerful than you can ever imagine. So let's say I played this on um, your evil twin. So if killed, we'll have more power than you could ever imagine. Uh, they played this where the lizard is constantly farting. But they can also just play it on here. The orphan with the card of gold is constantly farting. And then what the conductor is going to do is going to choose which side he wants to train to die. And who he wants to kill. He can kill the balloon containing a highly contagious airborne, fragile but functional teleportation machine, but also a giant lizard on its way to attack a major city. Or you could kill a scientist or one day discover a secret to interspace travel, an orphan with a heart of gold who happens to be constantly farting, and your evil twin, but if killed, will return more powerful than ever. So let's say he killed this one. Everybody who was on this team will get a marker, which is a negative. Anybody on this team will not. You'll discard it. The conductor will change to somebody else, and you continue to play that everybody's been a conductor once. Whoever has the least amount of these will be the winner of the game. That's how you play trial by trolley. It's mostly um, a one-note joke here that you're playing through. The scoring kind of takes you out of it a little bit, but that's the rules of the game.